Welcome back. Kareem Marcel is a former youth parliamentarian, a graduate of Trinity College, and is currently the first University of the West Indies Faculty of Law, McCandle Dagger Scholar. And he is a product of Beetham Gardens. He's my guest this morning. Good morning, Kareem. Hi, good morning, Mr. Kam. And welcome back to the studio because you were here before as a leader of now. Indeed, yes. Yes, and I now like. you, you are a scholar yes. from UWE. Yes, in fact, I just graduated my bachelor's in law um, on Friday gone. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, that's why you are looking so <laughs> elated. <laughs> and what does that mean? Do you have graduation well, this be year? Because of, because of the COVID restrictions, um, I think that the, fac the university as a whole took a decision to push um, graduation until next year. Yes. Yes, but, okay. um, but I would be attending the Hewden Law School from in September, God's willing. Oh, congratulations. Thanks so much. And wonderful. Now, let's go straight into it. Your guest this morning on peace protests and the police, the way forward. We're mm. looking for solutions. And we're talking to you because you would be considered one of the success stories coming out of Beetham Gardens. You could have taken an alternative route. How did you do it? Um, my personal journey would have started um, quite different, although growing up in poverty, I grew up in a home that was rich in morals and values. So I had a matriarch lead in my home, um, in my mom. Uh, and I, I mean, I started off with, with both parents. Uh, my father left to go to the United States. Um, he would have committed murder there, and he's uh -huh. serving a life imprisonment there. But through all that, because that happened when I was in, in now going into to Trinity College. Um, so but you would have been what, about twelve years old. About eleven, yeah, about 11, eleven years, yes. yeah, eleven years old. Mm -hmm. You know, when when my father would have left, and then in form two or so is when he would have committed the um the, the murder. So mm -hmm. initially we thought he was going for a three month vacation. Um, he decided to stay to stay out to get married, and eventually he killed his wife, mm -hmm. and uh, um he's now serving a life imprisonment. Um, so. Even at that venture, when my mom had to step up and be that um, both mother and father within the home, we, I think her strong morals and values, the fact that even if she sent us to school with two pencils, um, she always says better to come home with less. Um, if she sent us to school with $20 um, and $15 in transport, then you don't come back home with a snack box if you can't account for it. So these are the little things that, that the little morals and values that, that, that I was that I that I had to grow up with yes. in terms of that, that made me different. And along the way there were so many to me I'm a product of, of what a community that it takes a community to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And my community wasn't limited to only my physical community at Beatham Gardens. But throughout my life I have always looked for positive male role models. Um, you know, and I think that is what that is exactly where that gap in terms of our community is because when you have these single when you have these single parents home and you have these young men who are looking for for positive male fi male figures or mentors, they are just looking for male mentors. Yes. And because they lack it in a home and they go out in the community and what and the ones that they see as having the bling, having the gold, having the cars, having the, 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 the fancy homes, the, the girls, the lifestyle. Um, are what we call the gang leaders now, mm -hmm. and they sometimes fill that 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 gap, you know, um, for persons to look up to. And I, from very young, you know, have have taken have taken a, a principal decision that I want to be um, an exemplar in my community for the young for for young persons to know that I would have came from the same exact um, poverty with them, but I decided to take a positive a positive road, and it paid off for me. It certainly did, but did you ever feel pressured growing up, peer pressure, for example, mm -hmm. to to go in the other direction? Um, no, I haven't been peer pressured. In fact, I don't think that it's there's a to me it's, there's a big misconception among society that young persons in these communities mm -hmm. are peer pressured into being gang members or gang leaders. Yes, because the lifestyle has become so attractive. There's no need for peer pressure. They almost as if they want to be them. Yeah. And but I meant because you had decided that you were not going down that life, were mm -hmm. you pressured at all, uh, being the one who was going in the opposite direction? You know, why you don't want to be with us? Mm -hmm. How come that, you don't want to hold a gun, yeah. for example? Yeah. Um. I never had that. I never had that. Um. That experience. Um. I mean, I had friends who you know who went to who went to school around around the same time with me who. Who grew up this, you know, grew up next to me. Um, they turned out to be 
they turned out to, to, to be in that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, but never once they try. In, in fact, because I, ha I was so... Um, I was so vocal from very young. Um, you know, I had my own mind. I, you know, I, I always knew what I stood for. That is the reason I think that I was able to get that support from even persons who are doing wrong. They're telling me, you know, Kareem, you be the difference. You know, all I can go down with you be the difference. You know, so I have literally a community in in good, bad, any everything yes. that's really trying to for me to be a good one. Do you see yourself as a role model now um, for your community, and how does that play out? Um. I try my very best um, because things that things that you know that I may want to do in my in my youth from very young you know I had to pull back you know because I know that there are so many eyes so many eyes in terms of our youngsters so many persons telling me um, you know cream cream mm -hmm. how do I how do I get in law mm -hmm. how do I get in um, medicine because so they want they want to do it when I go to different schools because I work with different schools within the esports Spain community yeah. what I've what I've noticed is that. We have youngsters, when you when ask them what they want to be, apart from being a soldier and being a police officer, mm -hmm. which, are, which, are, which, are no, which are noble professions. Yes. But how do we get them to dream beyond that? How mm -hmm. do we get them to, to, to dream to be an engineer and an attorney? Um, and, these are, and these are some of the things that we have been faced with because even when they go out into the communities, you would find the, there are few soldiers, there are few police officers, there are few fire officers so that they can look up to. Yes. But how do we get them to dream beyond, you know, you know, big, mm -hmm. that to know that the, the sky is the limit. How because do we do that? Right. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a matter of mentor, one, mentorship. Mm -hmm. I think it's about, I think it's about creating opportunities for them to see li likewise successful black men that came from, you know, from, from communities like them that came from struggle, whether it is, whether it's the prime minister from, uh, you know, from, from, from Scarborough, um, or, or whether it is the chief justice from where he came from. But, how do we get them to focus on that kind of lifestyle to know that hey, I can put in, I can put in that same work, and I can still drive a BMW. Yeah. I can still um, have a fancy home. How do we get them to do that? It's about tapping into their imagination. Because I was, I was, I was privy enough to go to Sacred Heart Boys. In Sacred Heart Boys, I was, we, we are right next to the office of the DPP. So from very young, I would see lawyers in and out, um, the DPP in and out with the fancy suit, with the, with the, with the cap, with, you know, with the, with the, with, with, with security. So. I, from very young, I was like, ah, I want to be like that. So how do we get the youngsters who are going Beckley MRC, who are going Laventil Boys, who are going Excel Primary School, yeah. to see that kind of life, to be privy to that? Um, you know, so I think it starts with, with persons from the community um, coming back um, and, and, and being good exemplars. So one of the very first things that I was trying to work on um, now that my degree is finished, is um, is a career day, right? You know, to try to get um, successful persons from um, you know in society to come back and share tip, tell them how you know you know that you know that the struggles that they face, how you know, and how do we go? And is forward. this only for persons from the uh, community to come in? And I ask that for a reason mm -hmm. because I would come, yeah. I would come. I've filmed in the Beetham mm -hmm. um, a number of times, mm -hmm. but one of the realities is that there is a fear. Some mm -hmm. people are afraid to come into the Beetham. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when we were filming there, uh, suppliers would drop the tent and say, "You put it up yourself," and mm -hmm. they're gone. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that fear legitimate? I think that if there may be some aspects um, of the fear that may be leg legitimate in terms of past acts, but to me. My community is a place that once you, you know, once you're coming for positive development, once you're coming for, and you know what you're for, um, they don't, they don't see, I have, I've had so many persons, you know, at first frightened to come in, and our communities are so welcoming yes. um, to that. Um, persons will help you change your tire, persons will, will offer you things from their, their home. Um, my community, Bitam Gardens, is really a loving community. Um, there are, like in any part of, of, of society, in any part of the world, there are some negative state, but I think that the positive by far, far mm -hmm. away. Can I say that that was my experience? Having filmed there, we did mm -hmm. Home Again, yeah. we did a number of music videos, we did some documentaries there, mm -hmm. and that was always my ex experience, I yeah. can tell you that. Mm -hmm. uh, but have you been ever been afraid to walk the streets of your community, ever? Mm -hmm. Not once. Um, I have been afraid um, in terms of the, the ongoing gang warfare. Um, in terms of, I had to, I literally say down the block, I can pull up, drive by, start, I have to be running for my life. Um, How does that make you feel? Your um, home, your hometown? It's always as if you're on edge. You're, um, you're, all, you're always looking out. So it's never like I'm just relaxing on the block. It's like you're relaxing and I'm on the block. But if a car slow down a certain way, 
you're, you're always on ready set and you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And that is the that is reality that we face in these communities, and that's why we that's why we are trying so hard um, to really break down those borders to to bring true and meaningful meaningful um growth and, and, and development and peace amongst our community. Mm -hmm. I think that over the past few days we have seen some sort of divine intervention. Um, you know, stemming from protest action yes. to actual peace within our within our communities. And why is that doesn't um you know um take away from what the police have to do in terms of their crime fighting initiative. And in fact if they have uh, if they have the evidence they are encouraged and welcome in the community to to, to arrest persons, charge and bring them before the court, etc. Um, but in the inter in, but in the meanwhile, I think that we should, as a society, welcome the idea of our young men in the community saying that they are fed up mm -hmm. of sleeping with their machine gun, yes. that they are fed up of having to watch the block, they are they are fed up of the of the of killing their own. And I think and that are they saying this? And they are saying it. Many of many of them are many of them are afraid to say it. They are mumbling it. They are telling you on you know on the thing you know they want to get out. They want a way out. Mm -hmm. But how do we get that? Why whole are they afraid to say it out loud? Because they are part. Because most of them would be a part of a of a gang. Right. Um. And just like in any organization, you would have your leader, and you would have you would have ways and means in order to, con to control that. Yeah. So I think that we reached a point over the last few days that even the gang lead, so called gang leaders. Um, um, amending fines, and um, I want to encourage it, not not for the sake of not for the sake of of, of violence, because I I don't can I I don't condone those kind of things at all, but really to take this opportunity to 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 just save the next generation, because I am not involved in crime, my nephew is not involved in crime, but yet still my I have to be when my nephew walk on the road, I my heart automatically starts to race. I am not just frightened for, for me looking out to run, but his innocence may not may not drive him to that. Yes. So I have to be always on the lookout for him. My heart is always racing an extra mile because I don't know if it's a car, if it's if if somebody's just how how is that going to happen? Mm -hmm. So these communities have been um, have been living in a sort of a fear because of uh, of a few elements among amongst us. And the difference, and you know I want to get into to that about a, a little bit because we have had these communities that have been working with the police service for years. Mm -hmm. Our relationship between the police service um, and the communities have improved significantly through the interagency task force, through mm -hmm. the arts and minds, through different key persons that have been have put in that work in order to, to bridge it together. And as I said, in nearly every organization, anything, you would have good and you would have bad. Yeah. So it's a matter of how do we how do we bridge how do we bridge that gap? Mm -hmm. um, I think that we have been going in a, in, a, in a positive direction, with the with the except with the exception, of course, of the of the of, of the of the row officers within the TTPS mm -hmm. that have been using um, the 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 tools given to them in order to protect and serve to actually be rogue agents and to actually commit extrajudicial killings. Yes, and I know you feel very strongly about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, before we go. Mm -hmm. I like to say that poverty in itself is not a crime, mm -hmm. uh, although at times it appears as if it is. Mm -hmm. You know, people are held accountable because they are poor. Mm -hmm. But really and truly, it's the impoverished spirit. Mm -hmm. In our closing remarks, speak mm -hmm. to that and to the future. Mm -hmm. Indeed, um, I'm living. I'm a living example of that of that particular um, quote, because although I grew, you know, although I grew up in poverty. Um, that was in my spirit, rich in morals and values. Um, you know, um, you offer me things. You offer from, from very young. You offer me things I won't accept because my mom don't take things from strangers. You know, these 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 little things that as a community, you know, as a community, um, we have to encourage our youngsters to be that light, mm -hmm. to see a life beyond the you know their their physical circumstances to get them to tap into the opportunities available to them, to bridge the gap between the opportunities that the state and private sector and, and NGOs, et cetera, would have out there for them, and to let them know, although they start, they start at, a, at a minus, being poor, being black, being young, being in a three-quarter pants, being in a, in a vest, being a, have your hair style a certain way, that is, a, that, is, that, is a, that is something that society puts yes. you at minus for one time. So we need to, as, as, as a community, as a people, yeah. really rally together, 
raise our raise our young people in order to break that cycle of poverty, break that cycle of violence, and create positive citizens that I know we can do in these communities. Kareem Master, thank you so much for coming on set and chatting with me this morning. Thank I am inspired, you. as I'm sure you are too. Mm -hmm. And congratulations once again, University of the West Indies, um, a candle dagger scholar, the first one, the first and one. you graduated on Friday yeah. in law. We're taking a few messages. Come right back here on the Now Morning Show.